Welcome to Mojo Talks, I'm Eric, and as you may know, we have a new series on Watch Mojo, wherein we talk about the new stuff to binge, because there's always new things on the streaming services, and we tell you what to binge over the weekend, and we come back and we talk about it, and so we've convened a panel of our uh, uh, biggest bingers. <laughs> we've oh, got great. Andrew and Rebecca. Okay. How you guys doing? I'm good. tired from all my binging. You did a lot of binging? Yeah. Okay, that's good. <laughs> uh, and so uh, let's get right to it. We talked about three things uh, in the video. We talked about um, Sneaky Pete, we talked about the new Ricky Gervais uh, stand-up, and we talked about Theory of Everything. Uh, but let's start with Ricky Gervais. I know you watched it, Rebecca. I and did. you lukewarm? Well, okay. Full disclosure, I'm not like the biggest Ricky Gervais fan. Mm -hmm. um, I can't. I don't like cringe humor, so. Okay, so the. Office I don't like the American Office, so oof, the the British, the British office, office, which is would maybe like the greatest me. show of all time. Fine, but it would like kill me. Yeah, but this so, is a stand up. This yeah, I know, a, but I mean, it's still his sensibility. So. So uh, already he's got a strike against him. Yeah, a little bit. Okay. Um, anyway, I think he's very talented. I th uh, what he does, I think he's very articulate. He's very smart. He's you know ob his observational humor is on point, but. Um, I mean, he was going. One of his big things throughout the the, the stand up with yeah. the special was that critics say I'm out of touch, but I'm not. But he kept talking about how you know, like he, he lives in is, Hampstead. He's super rich, uh, but like the thought, the thing I thought he was most out of touch on was his Caitlyn Jenner bit. But okay, uh, and and I will reply to that because I, uh, I I too also felt that he was a bit out of touch and he was a little bit uh, you know really talking about how rich he is and how his lifestyle is uh, so unattainable. Uh, but the and we clearly know that he does not give a flying anything that we are talking about him right now. He yeah, doesn't absolutely. give a crap no, what no. we think. But here's the thing: he talks about the Caitlyn Jenner joke and how he got flack for it, but he explains how it was a funny joke, and he talks about you know the yeah, subject of the joke. Yeah, and explaining how a joke is funny is always hilarious. <laughs> well, he turns it into a new joke because the whole point of this, he hasn't done a stand-up series in seven years. Yeah, I so wish I'd point, seen another one of his stand-ups ever. Yeah, I've only seen one of those. You should binge all of them. Uh, they, and so this is him like he's coming back, and he's like, you know what? Here's all the stuff that I'm pissed off about. The people are pissed yeah, off. And the and people, I can tell. well, that he's, but well, okay, he's, people are mad at me for this, but he's mad that they're mad at him. Right. You know, so he's just getting it yeah, all no, out of there, and, and he's like, and if you don't I'm like it, I don't is, care. I, I don't like it. It's okay. just not. Okay. And you're me. allowed to, and you're, I you're absolutely allowed to not like it. And you don't like cringe humor, and yeah. so. And otherwise, had it not been for this show, I would not have watched it. So to be fair to Ricky Gervais, I would have just not watched it. It's not for me. <laughs> I don't know if he would be happier yeah. to know that, but. No, I, but he did say like, if it's not for you, just like you know the thing like uh, piano lessons or whatever. He's oh, like, right, I don't want piano lessons. And I, yeah, I would have just not watched it. The thing is, I don't know if he's a born stand-up. He does a pretty decent job of it. Um, and I even wonder if, you know, uh, in, in, you know, a bigger question here is with Netflix giving us so many stand-up specials, are we now being overexposed to stand-up specials as if we're supposed to be familiar with all of Ricky Gervais' Yeah, Gervais's but maybe it's making them all up their game. Yeah, possibly. Because they all yeah. have to be on, like, Dave Chappelle's level now. That's right. And I, but I did think, uh, what I did like about the special is when he does finally get to the, uh, you know, his atheism, uh, you know, the commentary on religions and social media, I think he really sticks it uh, to, to the people that deserve to be, to be getting it stuck to. I suppose, but then he's also like giving them a lot of uh, power that he's literally picking apart one tweet he received. Right. And I'm like, okay, that, that, well. Those parts were funny, I chuckled. It was, f I can't, I chuckled once through the, the entire show. Okay, um, what it was so it's called Humanity, Ricky Gervais, um, and if you like his humor, uh, you know, I, I would definitely check it out. Cancer. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> next on the list, let's talk about Sneaky Pete. Andrew, this is uh, yeah, Brian, Brian Cranston's uh, show. This is season two. This is season two. Yeah. Yeah, it's, um, it's a show, it's, Brian Cranston's in it, but it's more of a cameo. Don't watch it expecting, A recurring like, cameo. Uh, yeah, a recurring cameo, but don't watch it expecting, like, oh, I want to see Brian Cranston. I like Brian Cranston. But he's made the show, and it was a show he originally had chopped out to, like, CBS as just a cop procedural drama mm -hmm. with this guy who's, uh, like, an ex-convict who used to be a uh, con artist, and then he just helps the police. Played but, by Giovanni Ribisi. Played by Giovanni Ribisi. But instead, once, uh, CBS didn't want it, but Amazon picked it up for their streaming service and they turned it into like just a, mo they modernized it and turned it into a show that's, you know, now like season long story arcs, a lot more drama. Like a Breaking Bad type. Like a Breaking like, Bad. But let's not say that because. But, well, but I don't, th yeah. I think we need to. Like, yeah. is it comparable to Breaking Bad? 
That's a good question, and I would say no. It's not, f well, it's not that it's not fair. It shouldn't really be compared to Breaking Bad. However, that being <laughs> said. His voice cracks when he If you like uh, good writing, if you like a main character, like an anti-hero uh, lead who's got a lot of depth to him, mm -hmm. and if you like sort of the wacky, super far out there situations that are super unbelievable, but while they're happening, you believe it, then this is a show for you. Is it funny at all? Like, Breaking Bad had some dark humor. Yeah, but think, I mean, Brian Cranston, if you, th he was the dentist on Seinfeld. Okay, he's and hilarious. Brian yeah. Cranston's yeah. funnier than he is dramatic to me. But, in the middle. But it, does it have any of that dark humor? Not, well, I would say it's Breaking Bad, like, later in the series. Like, you know how Breaking Bad started off, like, Them more quirky and funny, acid yeah. in the and then it yeah. gets, <laughs> and then, like, and then the humor gets few and far between. This is kind of the same way. Like, okay. shit gets real. There's some interesting things here. So Brian Cranston's uh, nickname was Sneaky Pete, uh, and a lot of the characters in the show, their names are his family members' names. Oh, I didn't know that. So I get the sense that there is, you know, th th there's a definite personal connection here uh, to the point where even there's a character, Vince, is named after Vince, Vince Gilligan, Gilligan. <laughs> the the creator of, of Breaking Bad. So I feel that he's injecting a lot of his own personal experience into it. That's pretty cool. Okay, um, but it, it, worth watching. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. It's a shame more people don't get on board with it. It's Maybe it's Amazon, Amazon is, is harder to access than... I didn't even know we had it in Canada. <laughs> right. So there you go. Um, now last, uh, Theory of Everything. It's not a new release, but you know, considering the passing of Stephen Hawking, something I think that was you know, important to watch if you are interested in the life of Stephen Hawking. Um, you, you watched it for the first time. I watched it for the first time. and it, um, it, I mean, it's a fantastic movie, but it, it just made me a bit sadder that he had died. Mm -hmm. Because I, at the end of the movie, I mean, obviously it was made in 2014, I think. So at the end of the movie, it was basically like he hasn't solved his thing yet, and I'm like, has he solved his thing yet? I don't think because he gave in a, I know he gave in a paper like two weeks ago. Two weeks, uh, ten days before he yeah. died. And I don't know what it, it's about, but maybe he solved. Well, I have some information on it. Oh. It basically s lays out the theoretical groundwork for discovering parallel universes. Oh right. Not yes, only I that, but you know, groundbreaking mathematics to allow spacecraft to find. Uh, multiple Big Bangs. So the guy, just before passing away, co-authors, oh, I'll just co-author this paper <laughs> that changes everything. Um, or has Eddie, the potential to change everything. Has the potential to change everything. Um, and uh, um, Eddie Redmayne did such a good job. Apparently, uh, um, Stephen Hawking wrote uh, an email to the director of the movie, James, uh, James Marsh, to say, I at times felt like I was watching myself. Awesome. I can believe wow. that. Yeah, so I think if, you know, um, just considering all those things, it's it's worth watching. Yeah. Um, and if you like that movie, and if, if you guys like that movie, there's a movie that I remember seeing a couple of years ago called uh, The Diving Bell and the Butterfly. And this was about a guy named Jean-Dominique Bobby, and he was the editor of Elle magazine in France. And he had a massive stroke and woke up with locked-in syndrome and could not move anything but one eyelid and wrote a fantastic book about his experience after that. Um, and it won all kinds of awards. Uh, it was a tremendously good film. So if, if you're a fan of the theory of everything, then I also recommend uh, the, the Diving Bell and the Butterfly. Yeah, I've always wanted to see that, but I never It's, it's award-winning and, and truly one of the movies that stayed with me for the longest. So, oh, oh last, lastly, we have like 20 seconds. Yes. Um, you watched something else this I weekend. I watched cool. The Muppet Guys Talking, which is a documentary where they had five of the original Muppeteers in a room together. I think it was filmed in 2012 before Jerry Nelson or The Count. Like, I am The Count. I like to count things. Ah, ah, ah. He died in 2012, so it was before he had passed away. Um, and they were just talking about their experiences, working with Jim Henson, what a great collaborator he was, and kind of, you know, which characters they did and which parts of themselves those characters kind of represented oh, and how, how they developed them. And it was super, super interesting. But it's literally just them talking. So there's Like a there's, podcast. Yeah, it's like a podcast more than a documentary, but uh, super worth watching. Okay, Where well, can we find that? It's on their website, which I, I don't know if it's The Muppet Guys Talking or just Muppet Guys Talking, but okay. I paid monies for it. It's nine, I think it's like ten bucks. But, and now it's, oh, oh you, ha you have to pay for yeah. it to watch it. Okay, yeah. gotcha. Yeah, but that's I mean, online. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, Frank Oz is like my hero. Yeah, it must be cool I to love see him talk. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you guys for coming by. Let us know what you think, and uh, we'll catch you guys next time. <laughs>